good to be back from break. And you know, a lot of the guys were able to get home, all of them, I, I believe. And, uh, and obviously, we got some international players, so for them to get a chance to get home and uh, Christmas is a special time. Um, but then, you know, everyone's excited to get back to work. And um, we had a good practice yesterday, get ready to get on the bus. And, you know, the GLI is a, a great tournament, one that we're proud to be a part of and looking forward to playing in it. Yeah. Um, with, the, with the success you had in the first, I don't know if you call it the first half of the season, first portion of the season, is it a task to keep, to keep everybody centered rather than watching the paint dry, so to speak? You know, just keeping it. Yeah, I think any time you have, again, it's, it was a good first half for us. You know, any time one of the dangers of, of a team or an individual is listening to outside noise, um, you know, when, when things go well, people tend to tell you, you know, how good you are. and. You can go the other way too when you don't do well. So we're trying to take an EVQ approach here and um, just focus on the things that we can control our effort and attitude, try to tune out the noise and, and try to get better every day. January doesn't, you know, it's not easy for you guys. Two, two, two of the three series on the road and it doesn't get easier after that. Are you guys kind of preaching a little bit of urgency in these next two games to just, you know, start the second half on the right foot? Yeah, I mean, I've always felt like, you know, I feel fortunate. The GLI, you know, I, I went to it as my, my parents used to get us tickets, you know, and we go as a family. And my dad went to the original one um, at Olympia. Um, but I've always felt like it's a great opportunity to kind of kickstart your second half, you know. And um, we're not we're not focused on anything else except for, you know, going and having a good practice today at, at GR and then, and then having a good tournament. And, you know, I think January, February, we're going to talk about player development. And for our team, that's really a, an unbelievable opportunity to, to, to gain on teams. I think that's a time where at times uh, people feel like they need to take their foot off the gas and we can really uh, keep improving as, as a team sort of looking, looking at it as an opportunity. How much do these mid-season tournaments, so to speak, uh, how much do you guys enjoy those? I know it's just two games, but... Oh, I think it's one of the most unique things about coming to Michigan State to play in, in the best uh, Christmas tournament, you know, and um, I think this is the 56th year of it. Um, you know, excited about you know being in Grand Rapids, a new venue, be able to play in that the first time, and it's a great hockey fan base there in GR. And you know, I think to, to middle of the season have some you know something to play for, and not that we don't every day, but um, I think it's a unique opportunity when you come to Michigan State. We're looking forward to it. Do you have any favorite memories of the GLI as a kid, or at least when you played? You know what? I think yeah, I have a lot of them. Uh, so you know, my dad again. My dad go back to my dad um, going to the original. So he talked to us, tell stories, and growing up in Sheboygan. Um, all of our, our relatives in the Detroit area, so our Christmas morning was always open presents and then drive down to Detroit. And, and one of the things in our stockings every year was, was GLI tickets, so to go there with my brothers and watch. Um, I got to watch my older brother play in it when he was at Lake State. Um, I obviously get a chance to play in it here. We won it, uh, I think it was my junior year. That was, that was a pretty cool moment to win, win that, and, and especially playing with my younger brother on the team. And then to work, you know, work when I was doing hockey ops here. And um, one year we did it, it was at Comerica, so. Um, so kind of see the different different spots, and so excited, yeah, to, to, to go to GR for it. What can it do for a group of guys to win? I know Michigan State hasn't won in a you know good amount of time, but what would you think that could do for this group as you guys get going now? Yeah, no, I think um, I think it's a great opportunity. You know, anytime you're you're, you're going into a weekend, and you, you guys know what's at stake. You're a chance to we haven't won it since '09. Um, we you know it's a, it's a tournament that's really important to our school, important to our alumni base, and. Um, yeah, I think it's, it can, can really springboard you in the second half. But I, I also think we want to keep that same approach that we're, we're focused on trying to get better and, and start our first game against Ferris. We want to play our best game of the year. How about Ferris? What makes them stand out for you? You know, they've had uh, this last stretch, they played really well. You know, and, and Coach Daniels is, um, you know, when you look at college hockey, he's one of the class acts um, in the game. Really, really good coach. Um, and his whole staff, they do a really good job. They're going to play really hard. Um, they have good structure, and, and it'll be a really good test for us. So you said you guys returned to practice yesterday? Yeah. How much time did you give them off? Did you say that? Uh, they, we, what was the last day would have been? If it was Thursday of finals week, was that the? Yeah, so. Okay, so a week. Yeah, they got about a week okay. off, yeah. So um, we talked about that. You know, I think we, we really have pushed our guys hard, and it was important that they get home and have a break. I thought there were some guys yesterday that had more, more jump. I thought they were maybe you know, energy-wise, maybe leaking oil at the end because we, we were really pressing. But that's when, you know, when you're trying to be an elite team and trying to be an elite player, it, it takes a lot, you know. And so you have to get right to that wall. And 
Um, I thought our guys as a group did, did a really good job of that, and I thought the timing of the break was good. Do you have any personal uh, relationships with any uh, other teams playing in this one? All of them, yeah. All of them. Yeah, so Coach Daniels, uh, Ferris was the first school that recruited me, I remember. Um, you know, if, if you ask my dad, his favorite college coach, you'd say Bob Daniels. He, he thinks the world of him. He's a great guy. I, go, I golf. Uh, Jeff Blasio played at uh, Ferris. We did a golf outing up at Arcadia, and so I got to coach, uh, golf with uh, Coach Daniels there. Um, Pat Fershweiler at Western. Um, you know, he's at World Juniors, but him and I worked in Detroit uh, for two years. John, the head coach at Michigan Tech, was my uh, coach and junior. And, you know, I think Joey, for me, um, you know, that was really the first time, you know, a coach truly, I think, believed in me, you know, and, and the, what that felt like, and it, it really had an impact on me as a, as a player and a person. What do you think about the field overall? Three of the teams are, are ranked in the, the, the polls in the top 20. And would, for the first year in Grand Rapids to have, and Ferris is, five, everybody's 500 or better. Yeah. For the first year in Grand Rapids to have that kind of field. I think it's great. I think it's great. You know, I think GR is such a great hockey town, you know, with, you got the Griffins there, and um, it's a great venue, and, and, and to put quality opponents in this tournament, I think it's a, it's a really exciting time for the GLI. As far as the other teams, you know, Tech and uh, Western, how much have you like, prepared for them, the, you know, the ones you'll, uh, either one you'll be playing the following day? A little bit. Uh, Dan Sir just watches, has watched the other two, you know, play quite a bit. We watched some of it. Um, our focus has been on Ferris and, and us, you know, primarily, and then and then we'll see who we play the next day and prepare. So you know all about the the, the history in Detroit and the tradition that the GLI was down there. Now it's starting in Grand Rapids, it probably take a few years to get some tradition going. But how much ownership do you take in wanting to get that? you know, grounded in the foundation set in Grand Rapids so that they, you know, can stick there. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, we're excited about playing it. You know, I'm thankful that, you know, it's Michigan Tech's tournament. Thankful they invite us to play in it, you know, and, um, and, and partnering with them. You know, I think when you look at Michigan Tech, um, unbelievable program, and they travel really well. they got a passionate fan base. And then you can take two teams from the west side of the state, Ferris and Western, um, and we have a ton of alumni on the west side of the state. So, um, you know, last I looked at the ticket sales look pretty good, you know, and um, but, but yeah, taking some ownership in here and trying to build it, and I think it could be a really special tournament. And team-wise, what, what do you need to work on here as, as you come back? What are some points of emphasis as you get going again? You know, I think still trying to, trying to perfect uh, playing to our identity for 60 minutes, you know. And, um, you know, I thought there's areas of our game where we, I, th I think we're playing fast. I like that about our team. Um, I think that uh, our discipline's been good. we got to maintain that. Um, and I think our competitiveness has been good. You know, I think all of those just ratchet it up a, another level. I think any league, um, the second half of the year, it cranks up. There's more at stake with points. The teams are, um, you know, they're, they're, they're grasping their coaches' concepts better, and it's tighter, and uh, offense is harder to come by. And um, so I'm excited to watch our group in that type of environment. Kind of going off of that, what are some things you guys need to do tomorrow to ensure you're playing in that championship game on Wednesday? Yeah, I think anytime you're coming off a break, is um, you want to try to get to your game as soon as, as possible, you know. And so for our game, it's it's team hockey. Um, it's not wait for one guy to do it. We got to do it as a five man unit. We got to defend as five, and we got to play on offense as five. Um, you know, I think shift link matters. You know, when you're coming out of break and um, not trying to do too much, kind of keep it simple and. Um, and then I also think coming out of break, you know, competing at the puck sometimes can shock you, you know, because you haven't, uh, we did it a little bit yesterday, but, um, you know, those are areas I think are really important for us to start right. I think you've got five or six players with five goals or more. How do you feel about your balance right now and how that's come around? Is that what you envisioned before the season? Has that been a pleasant surprise or what do you think? Yeah, no, I think having depth and scoring is really critical, you know, and um, again, I think if you watch our team, we, I'm proud of. We're still not perfect, but uh, we play as a team. And I think when you play team hockey, um, your scoring is spread out. And, you know that's important for what we're trying to build here. We want to be a team that is four lines deep and we can roll and don't have to necessarily worry too much about matchups. And um, so far, it's, it's, it's gone well. When you were coming into the season and getting the players to, to believe and buy in, as coaches talk about, did you talk about accumulating X number of wins by the halfway mark, or was it just weekend to weekend? And as they've Accomplish this? Um, do do you do you sense more belief in your young players and transfers and everybody, or was that all always there? You know, I think when we got here, I, one thing that was evident is they really wanted to be a good team. You know, and I think that may seem super simple, but I think in their heart of hearts, 
they wanted to be coached. And we, we haven't talked about where we're at in the standings. We haven't talked about wins, losses. We don't even talk about it before the game. We just like, try to have a good practice and, and try to get better. I think I've said this before. Um, one thing I'm really proud of, of uh, there's been one day I left the rink where I didn't like a set practice. You know, not that we were perfect and not that the execution was always, but the, the effort, uh, the attitude, the wanting to be coached. Um, and that's, that doesn't always happen with teams, you know. So um, we're just taking that one day at a time approach and um, we're going to continue that in the second half. I haven't had a chance to ask you this after the games here that have had so much buzz. I've been doing some things. I'll talk about that later. But what's it been like to have a full house? And the buzz and the excitement, the energy, the, the last two, the last three home games. That you've had. Yeah, it's been awesome. Super thankful for our crowd. You know, I like the way it's built. You know, I thought early on um, there were some empty seats, but I think that it, it shows you that uh, our fan base is passionate and want to want to see a good hockey team on the ice. And um, we got a lot of people that make a lot of calls on the marketing side to, to, to promote. Um, you know, I'm a big believer in, in doing your job too, and I, I think I talked to them about that. I'm thankful for what they do, but our job is to is to put a product on the ice that people are excited about and. Um, so thankful that they're doing that, and I feel like we're doing our part to, to, to put a product out there, and um, that makes a big difference. Like I, I, I'm thankful that our guys got to see Mon that way. Um, I, I had multiple people come to me and say they hadn't seen it that that loud in 20 years, and that's 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 pretty cool and testament to the guys and their effort. I know you've been asked about this also throughout the course of the season, but Russell and Dorward and that what that line has done. Uh, what did you envision? It's hard to, to to know with fresh round imagining from a coaching standpoint, but. What did you expect from that line, and in what ways have they uh, satisfied what you're hoping for, or maybe exceeded at this point? What are your thoughts on that? Thing? Yeah, they've had a really good start to their career here. You know, I think for us, their the expectation was no different than any of our other guys. Like, we want your best effort, your best attitude, and want to be coached every day. Um, come to the rink with a humility that, but still confident that hey, I, um, I believe in myself, but I still I need to improve every day. And I think that's what those guys have done really well. Um, that's one of the hardest things as a freshman. You come in and. Um, sometimes you can think you're the chosen one or, and, and, and take that approach where um, those guys certainly have come in and put their head down and worked, not, not expected special treatment. Um, and they need to continue to do that, you know, for them to keep growing their game and to keep helping our team. For, for a hockey fan in Grand Rapids, a Michigan State fan who maybe has not seen Dorward play yet, how would you describe him to someone who hasn't seen him play yet? Yeah, he's a real competitive uh, centerman, plays 200 feet. You know, that's one thing I really respect about his game is um, – even though he's a young player, I think he values playing both ends of the rink, you know, and that's um, that's really really critical. And you know, I think when you talk about Spartan hockey, it's it's a, it's a it's playing it with skill, but also having a blue collar uh, work ethic to your game. And um, I really think that that is that is his best quality is his work ethic and his compete. And Russell, how would you how would you uh, describe him to someone who hasn't seen him play yet? So similar similar to uh, Carson as far as his, his commitment, both sides of the puck. Um, very, very good skater that can stay on the puck. He's got good skill. He's, he's good in tight spaces. Um, he's competitive. He's, he's fearless. Um, yeah, those, those two have been great additions. And the pairwise ratings, getting a chance to play non-conference games here. I know that means a ton to Michigan Tech and to Western. What are your thoughts on that for your program and, and what that means to the tournament? And, and you, I know you're not talking about anything more than the, the next game to your players. But can you give us a comment on what it, what it means? Yeah, I think even bigger than that, it's important, um, you know, being a member of the Big Ten, that we do well in non-conference games because like, that strengthens everyone's. And we want our conference um, to have as many teams in the tournament as we can. And so we need to do our part in non-conference to make um, our non-conference record the best in college hockey. And that helps all the teams and helps us on the recruiting side. So, um, but yeah, to your point, we're, we're still just focusing on you know, this is the, the, we're not making a bigger deal out of it than it really is. We just got to go out. We want to go out and continue to improve as a hockey team and play, play our best hockey this weekend. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.